So today, Fabrizio Romano posted on Twitter and on Instagram the Argentina squad for these upcoming friendlies and for the 2024 Copa America. This is my brother. Anthony, how you doing? We're going to go over the team together and just talk about each player, who, which picks we agree with, who we think we're going to get dropped, and what uh, the strongest starting 11 would be, in our opinion. Yeah. So this is the first time we're actually looking at the team. Literally, it took us like 25 minutes to put this on the screen. And we'll go over each position. There are 29 players on this team. Uh, as you guys know, only 26 are actually able to go to the Copa America. So three players are going to get dropped. We're going to talk about who we think is going to get dropped. Uh, but let's just take a look at each position and just talk a little bit about each player. So for the goalkeepers, we have Armani, Ruli, and El Divo Martinez. Pretty standard. A lot of people don't agree that Armani should be there. I don't know if you have anything. On I that. mean, yeah, no, uh, as well. I mean, all I think about when I think of Franco Armani is his 2018 performance in the World Cup, which not the greatest. It's just just in case Martinez and Ruli just somehow, some way get injured, he's just going to be there. He's just the backup. Now, do you think they will take a third goalkeeper to the Copa America? No. Honestly, I feel like they shouldn't. I feel like it's shouldn't. not necessary. Yeah, because it's, especially with Martinez, uh, I, I know Ruli is probably, in my opinion, better than Armani. And somehow, if Martinez gets injured, if Ruli over Armani, it's going to be Ruli. And yeah, so I think the, the third choice of a keeper, I think already just that's going to be one of the players just not coming is a third goalkeeper. Well, Armani's going to go because really? I, yeah. he's going to go in my opinion because it's like he, well, lot, yeah, people don't like him because he's older mm -hmm. and it's like whatever, but like he has the experience, I feel like. So in, in, in case oh, he okay. has experience playing for the national team and he has experience playing in, in those like big situations. So, I mean, like that's why I think obviously he's still here and he's still coming and he is the backup keeper. He's the second choice goalkeeper probably. And then Gerard Marulli would be, the third, obviously. I mean, like you said, like, yeah, Armani has a lot more experience than Ruli, but but you said uh, Armani is older, he's getting old. I think it's time to start, you know, looking at the younger options, which Ruli is younger than both Martinez and Armani. Well, again, this is my opinion, but I, I feel like Ruli should be the second choice so we can he can start gaining that experience that Argentina is going to need once Martinez and Armani, you know, are no longer able to you know, do that goalkeeper duties. Ruli's really been doing really well for Ajax too. Really? So, yeah. Didn't he like see like five goals? All right, moving on. Mm -hmm. All right, moving on to the defenders. We have Montiel, Molina, Valerdi, El Cuti Romero, the best, Pesela, Cuarta, Otamendi, Elisandro Martinez, Acuna, Tagliafico, and Valentin Barco. How many defenders is that? That no, is like seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight nine, eight, ten, eight, eleven. 11. 11. God, I'm mad, man. So there's a you just said seven. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, there are eleven defenders on this oh. list. A hundred percent of defenders gonna get dropped. Yeah. I don't know who it's gonna be, but eleven defenders That's going to the Copa America. Yeah, I feel like it's way too. At least one of them is gonna get dropped, and it has to be a center back. I think that Acuna and Tagliafico. I think Tagliafico is a must. That he's he's yeah. the starting left back, right? So I'm. I feel like the wing back is gonna stay. Who are the other ones? Montiel and Molina. Obviously, they were part of the World Cup. They were very, very important to the team. Mm -hmm. We don't really have another right back. Let's talk about the obvious keeps. So it's El Cuti Romero, Otamendi, Lisandro Martinez, Tagliafico, Tagliafico, Montiel, and Molina, I feel like, are going to stay. I think Pesela is not going to get dropped. Yeah, no, I don't think so either. He is key sometimes when it comes to... Because he is tall. He's very tall. So I know that they always put him in the like always like near the end of the game just in case when things get yeah like he'll play like a sweeper mm -hmm. because he's older because he's slower um he is still like a tank mm -hmm. and like even though he's not the best option at center back like people are sleeping on Valerdi people sleep on uh sometimes Guarta you could say Guarta had a great season with, with Fiorentina Bel uh, Valerdi was having an amazing season at, at Marseille Barco too Barco had a, had, had, had a pretty good season at Boca he hasn't had a lot of game time for Brighton yeah, I think he had only six games at Brighton but he he, he does have like experience playing with the new the, the youth national team, team yeah and intense games too he does have pace though too with him he and he can play, he can play in a lot of positions like he can yeah, obviously he can, he can play left up. back yeah he can move up to the left mid left wing if need like if he has to if you were to say one defender was to get dropped from this team who do you think it'd be though i would say i mean i haven't really seen him play that much so i'm gonna just say Valerdi, only because i haven't seen him play that much i know everyone else is key in this national team i just know with these upcoming friendlies that we have though he might explore 
our options. Cuarta and Valerdi, maybe Barco. I thought you were gonna say Cuarta. I thought you were. I thought you were gonna say. Oh, and you said he had a, an excellent season. At I mean, Valentina. but both both bo- both of them have pretty good seasons. But I think it's it's between them because yeah. everybody else obviously has experience with the team already. They most of them. Or pretty much all of them have been at the World Cup. Yeah, they've been with in the last Copa America and the last Finalissima, so they all have experience playing with each other. So it's going to be one of them, and mm-hmm. I think it's going to be Quarta. All right, but yeah, I think it's Quarta. You think it's going to be Valerdi? I think Valerdi is better than Quarta, but both knowledge. Valerdi is six two. Wow. So you're just really... going straight off height. Uh, I'm just mentioning height because I know how important um our tall defenders are, especially in the corner kicks, free kicks, all the set pieces. So, so we can win headers i know we're not we don't have tall and strong defenders or just well no we have strong defenders we just don't have tall defenders that could win um those headers like I, i'm just going off as well the netherlands and the world cup but they oh my all the tall players that they had we we could have lost every single set piece every single header because of our height difference in the midfield we do have guido rodriguez we have McAllister, paredes de paul palacios enzo hernandez <laughs> Enzo Hernandez, De Paul, Palacios, Enzo Fernandez, and Lo Celso. So a lot of good options here, honestly, in my opinion. El Guido Rodriguez, a lot of people would underestimate him. Yeah. I think he is very crucial to our midfield. He probably won't be in the starting midfield yeah. unless he like really starts to pop off, honestly. He had a great season with Betis. He's obviously he's linked to a move with Barcelona. I think he's gonna be pretty important for us in this Copa America. Me, I think Guido is yeah, like you said, underrated. For me, I, I don't compare him to Busquets, but I, I see it very similar. He's just a strong midfielder that we have who can just, when I think of him, I think of Busquets. He's, you know, not fast. He's not amazing. But when we need him, he's there and he does as well still provide that midfield that, you know, he's like the, the base of the midfield too because he does play like a defensive midfielder, which I think we we need because if you look at our list we have mainly attacking midfielders or just like central mm-hmm. midfielders i know back alistair and um i think enzo as well tried the defensive midfielder role in chelsea but uh, chelsea does not deserve enzo fernandez with just the way they 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 are though so chelsea though injured right before the world cup so that was very unfortunate it did play in the copa america though was important. Uh, ha- every time I watch Spurs, he's not starting, which is, I don't know. No chance. Yeah, which is kind of crazy to me. I know he, uh, the last couple games I've been watching, he's been coming in like the 80, 85th minutes. Like, what are you doing? It was very unfortunate how Lochelso couldn't come to the World Cup. I thought he was going to dominate, honestly, yeah. in, in the midfield at the World Cup. And it was unfortunate he got that injury. If he does come... <laughs> <laughs> what did he say? <laughs> If Lo Celso does stay in the squad, I think even though he has been struggling for minutes, like you said, at mm-hmm. Spurs, um, I think off the bench, he'll probably be a really good option. Mm-hmm. Palacios is going to be key, I feel like. He he has been one of the best midfielders in the world this season, in my opinion. So yeah, he's been having an amazing season, obviously, with Leverkusen going undefeated this season. In the Bundesliga, winning the Bundesliga title. They're playing Europa League pretty soon against Atalanta. Uh, and they're also about to win the DFB Pokal. Um, so he's been, and he's been an absolute key part of that Bayer Leverkusen team. So if he can replicate th- those performances with the team over to the national team, like we obviously, we honestly have a very, very scary midfield. And if I was Scaloni, I would maybe start him for one of the friendlies just to see how he would be. Again, like you said, he was very key and crucial to this, um, to the uh, Leverkusen team and um, undefeated battle maybe win a treble so i think he should definitely at least maybe start um over just some of the midfielders just again just to test out you know it they're friendlies do these two games that we have coming up so if we lose nothing's gonna happen you know you just gotta we gotta keep we gotta think about the future no but i agree though because like, obviously we have these two upcoming friendlies before the copa america to prepare and you know to have a little bit of um to build a little bit of chemistry, to build a little bit of like, just a team plan and a game plan. Um, I honestly don't care about the results for these games. Yeah. Uh, obviously, I we just want to win. We just obviously we want to win, but I don't care if we do at the same time. As long as we perform well on the field and like the players, we can tell which players work with who mm-hmm. and what system uh, works best for these players. That's all I really care about. I honestly don't care if we lose three. Well, I will care if we lose three nothing. <laughs> I think at the end of the day, if we figure out, like, during the friendlies, like, that Palacios, De Paul, and 
McAllister is the th- are the three starting midfielders, or El Guido, DePaul, and Palacios, or whatever. If those are the three starting midfielders that that we see look best, then we should go with that. I'm I'm excited because our midfield is looking scary, and um honestly, I would be very surprised if one of these midfielders got dropped. I think if anybody were to get dropped from the midfield, it would be Lo Celso, unless he does show uh, promising signs during the friendlies. I feel like Lo Celso, if somebody were to get dropped, it would be him because of his lack of minutes with Spurs. And because he's probably, he's just like the one that's have has less impact in, in his club, in the club that he plays for compared to everybody else, compared to El Guido, but Paredes, McAllister, the ball, Palacios and so on and so forth. Do you have anything else to add? Yeah, I was going to mention uh, Enzo Fernandez actually just went on to go surgery, remember, mm-hmm. where, I mean, the only reason why he did it was saying that he believes he's going to be fit for this, which is exactly exactly why he's on the list. I think I think he, he's going to make it, but just in case somehow he gets re-injured, mm-hmm. that could be another one that they do drop so that he does, you know, he doesn't like uh, uh, injure himself uh, any further. That would be a very ser- a very scary situation. Even though he says that he, the only reason why he did the surgery was because he was going to be available for the Copa America, even though for some reason something goes wrong, God forbid, and he's not able to, obviously he's going to have to be the one that gets dropped. Yeah. Uh, I just, ho- I really hope that doesn't happen. I feel like he also could be pretty crucial. Yes. I don't know if he'll be a starter. That we'll talk about later. But yeah, let's move on to the attackers. And last but not least, we have the attackers. We have Angel Fideo Di Maria, Valentin Carboni, El Mejor Jugador de la Historia de Fútbol, Lionel Andrés Messi Puccitini, Angel Correa, Alejandro Garnacho, Nicolás González, Lautaro Martínez, y Julián Álvarez. First, I'm just going to start off with Alejandro Garnacho. What a disappointment, in my opinion. Oh, my goodness gracious. Stick to Spain. 36 matches. 30 games started. 7 goals, 4 assists. 11 goal contributions in 36 games? I'm still on the fact that you said, like, Colocini after Messi's name. Colocini? You mean Cuchitini? Whatever. What is Cuchitini? His last name. Can we get a Google check? Can we get a Google search on that? We could get a Google. That's actually kind of crazy. Mm-hmm. Who is Cuccettini? I think his mother. Anyways, we're going to pretend that never happened. So, yeah, I mean, Garnacho has been pretty disappointing. I mean, obviously, Manchester United are, like, yeah. the worst club in England right now, mm-hmm. respectfully. But, yeah, they've been having a really disappointing season. Obviously, they had a really, really slow start. Garnacho hasn't really impressed me at all this season. I really hope... He- he can prove me yes. wrong. I really, really hope he can I prove really me wrong. Him, or I really want him to be really good. I feel like he could be a crucial player for us because of just like his play style. I know he, he admires Ronaldo too. So if we have a Ronaldo admirer and a Messi lover, <laughs> Bicho lover, <laughs> combined. So when I saw him on the list, I was a little surprised because with that, I mean, with his performance, I mean, you know, he, Luca Romero is probably better. But yeah, I mean, b- despite that, though, I think we have a lot of attacking options as well uh, in terms of whether we play a front two or a front three. There's no way you just fucking ate a cookie in the middle of my fucking talking, bro. <laughs> like, obviously, we have Messi, we have Di Maria, even with players like Julian Alvarez, Lautaro. We just have a lot of depth in that squad, right? Obviously, Messi's going to be starting. Di Maria should be starting. We're going to have Julian and Lautaro battle it out once again. In the World Cup, obviously, Lautaro was our primary number nine. Pretty much, he wasn't playing well at all. And then Julian stepped up to the plate. We're going to see what happens this time around. We're going to see if Julian is going to step up to the plate again or if Lautaro actually wants to play football and uh, but uh, actually aim for the goal and actually aim for the goal but like he he's been doing really well for Inter mm-hmm. obviously they won the, they just won the league right they just won the league they made it to the Champions League final last season um so they they've been in good form in the last yeah, year two well years team, so. so he should be he should be a crucial role Julian Alvarez obviously not that he's not getting a lot of minutes at City, but he does get minutes off the bench. And when he does, he contributes. It's gonna. I'm not too worried about our attack at all, especially with Lionel Messi there as the creator, as the playmaker, as just the goal scorer that he is. We should be set. We should be set. But yeah, for Carboni, I'm not really too familiar with this game. I know all I know is that he's on loan at Monza, where it says it up there from Inter. He has been getting a lot of game time off the bench, though. He 1,077 has, minutes to be exact. He's had very, very few starts, very few goal contributions, and he's only 19 years old. Yeah. So honestly, wouldn't be surprised if this kid got dropped. I mean, but who knows? Maybe he'll stay and 
he'll come off the bench and he'll be like Julian Alvarez, right? Yeah. But... I mean, and uh, I'm going to mention too, uh, playing for club and national team is a different energy and a different type of feel. So I know personally me, if I was a player, um, I would always try harder for my national team. So you never know, maybe these kids put on their jersey and they're like, I got to go all out. I think that's a very common thing in south american football as well especially for argentinians i feel like it, from my experience of like talking to obviously being argentinian talking to a lot of argentinian people they prioritize country over club i mean like obviously they all have their respective clubs like boca river racing when it comes to the national team it's like you play for your nation and we take that a lot more seriously than maybe what most believe in i feel like every single one of these players play for their nation i'm um, not saying that they don't prioritize their club at all but i feel like when it comes to playing for the national team, there is a lot more passion. There's a lot more. There's a lot more passion. There's a lot more drive. And um, yeah, so I'm not. I'm not really worried about somebody underperforming because they don't want to be here. I mean, like if they don't want to be here, they would just be like, "Yo, I don't want to be here." Who was the England player that said that he didn't want to be here? Do you know what I'm talking about? Ben White. I think it was Ben White for England. He was like, "Yeah, I don't want to play for England. Like I just want to play for Arsenal." Then okay, cool. Then then don't. And I know for a fact that every single player here wants to be here. Not they want to play for these colors. They want to. Play for the flag and they're gonna put on they're gonna they're gonna give their 110 percent and not even that it's just as well they have to earn a spot here it's not like every single other player has to fight to have a spot um if not they can just easily give a place i know that there's key players that are missing from this list so i know that everyone here has fought to uh earn a spot here and has showed scaloni something that like oh yeah i'm worth here but not like like you said not like ben white where he's just like yeah i don't care all these players care all these players want to play for here. This is their goal. Their goal was to become a professional. Then after that was to play for the national team. So you said there were some players that you thought were missing yes, from I, this team. I see two key, um, three key attackers that are not there. And then one defender who did, did play, I'm pretty sure, in the World Cup. If I'm... Yeah, no, he did. Mm -hmm. I think. Or he he just was there. Um, okay. I'm going to start with the attackers first. Mm -hmm. Paco Gomez. Um that I see is not there. Paulo Diwala, mm -hmm. which is, I uh, mean, he, he yeah. was one of my favorite players. I know. I didn't realize that. Um, he also wears a, a number I like, 21. And then another one is Thiago Almada, was a World Cup player. Um, I don't know. I don't re okay. remember if he played. I know he's a key player for uh, at, um, Atlanta United. And I think he plays for the U23, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that would, those were. Can I stop you? Mm -hmm. So, first of all, Papu, El Papu Gomez does drugs. That's why he's not here. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. Almada, I think he's going to the Olympics. Ooh. Wait. Oh, yes. June it starts, right? Or is that July? It starts right after the Copa America. So, Dybala is somebody that I'm honestly, now that you're saying that, I'm very, very surprised is not on this list. Like, I think it should be him instead of Caruani, in my opinion. Sure. Because yeah. Like, he's been doing so well for Roma as well this season. Like, he's been popping off for Roma this season. Like, mm -hmm. look up his stats. In tw yeah, so in 27 matches, he started 24 and has 24 goal contributions. Which, that is a lot better than Carboni. He was just an absolute dog for Roma this season. So I'm very, very surprised that he has been completely left out. Unless, unless he's actually going to the Olympics. If he's actually going to go to the Olympics, like if he's choosing to go to the Olympics, because they probably decided that and they didn't announce it to the public, obviously, but they probably decided that behind closed doors. Because let's be real here, like Dybala has been very, very underappreciated in the national team. He's a fantastic player. He's literally like a messy, but like not. Nah. Nah. Yeah, he's, he's just a very underappreciated player for the national team. Yeah. So I honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if he chose to play in the Olympics with the U23 squad because he'll probably get game time there and he'll he'll have the opportunity to win a gold medal which is a very very huge accomplishment just by what what a lot of like people say um yeah, like well. winning a gold medal in the olympics is is a very huge deal like mm -hmm. no matter what i wish dibala could get more love and more game time but unfortunately like his position is already just filled essentially by the best player in the world so that's it's, it's really tough competition but yeah no i'm pretty i'm pretty happy with the squad that that were put together now we're going to talk about what we think is the best starting 11 for going into the Copa America and in what formation, what players to use. So let's get into that. So I'll go first. I'm going to do like a 4-3-3 formation, pretty much essentially what we've done at the World Cup, but here. So in net, I'm going to have obviously El Dibu Martinez, 
With the back four, I'm going to go with Tagliafico, Otamendi, El Cuti Romero, and Molina. In the midfield, I'm going to do McAllister, Palacios, and Depaul. And then for the front three, I'm going to do Di Maria, Julian Alvarez, and Lionel Messi. For me, I honestly have the same exact thing except for the Palacios. I would just put in as well over Palacios only because, well, that's just as well if he, if he actually plays and he's not injured and that thing. But this is, for me, the lineup for the Copa America. I think for the friendlies, it is going to be a different lineup, and he is going to experiment. But I think the same thing, just in so over Palacios, if he is 100% fit for the Copa America. Um, I know in the World Cup, though, we worked. We did a 4-3 in the final. I know for 4 we did a 4-4-2 against Arabia, and then we got dogged on. And then after that, I know he start, started experimenting with different formations. I know Netherlands, we played five at the back. I don't know. It worked. Yeah. Well, until the last yeah. couple minutes, but it was working. Um, but I think a four thirty three is probably best for uh, us. And I think the Copa America. I know Canada. I know uh, Davies is gonna be, um, a little bit of a threat on our on our right back Molina, because Davies is quick. I know Molina is quick, but I think Davies is a little bit quicker. So that's the only thing to really look out for. Hope I wish we had a little bit of quicker right back. But I know Molina. Molina is fast. Um. But yeah, I just hope that when the, the friendlies come, we experiment a lot with our team, especially, again, these games are not important. Just play. And Looking at the group stage now, like, obviously, it, we're in Group A. We have ourselves, Canada, Chile, and Peru. I honestly think that, I know, like, we kind of say this every time we're put in a group stage, but we're always favorites to group top. But I feel like, especially with this group, we should be even more favorites to top this group, right? Like, I don't think Chile is a threat in my opinion anymore at least anymore mm -hmm. uh compared they used to bully us canada literally have an entire coaching staff of americans um and then peru i know they made it to the copa america final in 2019 was it against brazil right i don't think peru is going to be a threat yeah i mean obviously I, I think our two biggest threats are canada and peru i mean canada probably on paper is a lot better um peru could just absolutely just have an incredible performance just out of nowhere like we said, like they did make it to the final a couple of years ago where they faced Brazil. In all honesty, we should be getting out of this group stage pretty, pretty easily. We should not, we should not be struggling against Chile. We should not be struggling against Peru. Um, Canada, I don't know about struggle. Like it'll probably be a bit of a dogfight, but honestly, we should be topping this group. Like no, like no excuses at all we can't pull like what we did in the world cup where we lose to saudi arabia and then we have to like fight for our and lives and in the, in the like every game hopefully that doesn't if that does happen hopefully that doesn't affect us mentally in terms of complacency like hopefully like we don't get too cocky getting out of the group stage i think scaloni will do a really good job in doing that and keeping the guys in check yeah Especially, no yeah since we have experience now from the world cup where we went in thinking the game against saudi arabia you know we were very I don't know if cocky is the word, but we were just very confident that this would be an easy game. And then obviously we lost. And then after that, every single game was a final. But yeah, hopefully it does go that way. Obviously, we see Argentina winning the whole thing and winning back to back Copa Americas. I think that'll be an insane achievement for us, especially. And this would probably be, in my opinion, I think if we win back to back Copa Americas, on top of the fact that we won the Finalissima, on top of the fact that we won the World Cup, this could be one of the best Argentina sides I think that we have seen in history. Mm -hmm. One hundred percent. Yeah. This can literally be up there with like the top three best national teams in the world in history. Like going back to back Copa Americas and in between that winning a World Cup, it's just honestly like at that point it wouldn't be a debate that this is for sure has to be one hundred percent one of the best teams in the history of football. But yeah, that is our reaction to the 2024 Copa America squad. And I'm very, very excited for this Copa America. Okay. I'll be covering pretty much every single Argentina game. And I'll probably be doing some uh, live streams as well, like doing watch alongs and things like that um, for pretty big games. Um, same thing for the Euros. I'll be doing a lot of content based around that. Maybe my brother will make another appearance. I don't know. But yeah, I appreciate everybody for watching. Leave a comment down below if you have any opinions or anything that uh, you disagree with or agree with uh, from what we've said today. Mm -hmm. But yeah, more Copa America content coming your way. Thank you for tuning in to the SoFo Soccer channel. And I'll see you guys in the next one. <laughs> I'm not playing. <laughs> Why are you that weird, bro? <laughs>